As we move each step closer to finishing this series on Does God Exist by Robbie Zacharias Ministries, I really lost any hope of finding an intelligent argument from any of our intrepid apologists. There just isn't anything for them to address, even when talking about the big topics like this week's entry, The Cosmological Argument. While they're big on claims, they're painfully empty on actual answers and rational arguments, and it becomes clear as time has gone on that not only have they not considered the arguments they're giving, they really don't know what any of the arguments they're using actually say. So, let's take a look at the cosmological argument from people who really aren't in it to convince us that God exists, and see what's what. I think we all agree that for everything to e that exists, there must be an antecedent cause to it, whether that's my own birth or the cake that was given to me for my birthday present or, you know, whatever. Now, the car that I'm driving, which I'm delighted with at the present time, I know that it didn't just show up. It wasn't a result of randomness plus time, that there was a designer, there was a manufacturing process, there was a shipping process. And so it seems to me that cause is intuitive for things that really exist in the, un the universe. While you can certainly argue that there was a designer for a car, we know that because cars actually are designed. You can't apply that to things for which you have no evidence for a designer. But here he just makes unsupported claims that somehow he knows that there was a designer. These people really have no idea what knowledge actually is. To know something, you have to have some objective basis for making that claim. You can no more simply claim to know that there was a designer than you can claim to simply know that there's a Santa Claus. That's not knowledge. That's belief. That's faith. Belief and faith do not impress rational people. We know that cars get designed because we know that cars do not exist naturally. We cannot say that with the world. We have seen absolutely no examples of a universe in which we have a demonstrable designer. The only universe we have seen so far is our own, and in that universe, wishful thinking aside, there's no reason to think that it had a designer. They do point to a reality beyond just the physical, and that reality has to have certain characteristics. It has to be timeless because it created time, uh, immaterial because it created space, extremely powerful if not all powerful because of the, 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 nature, the, the vastness of the universe. And it also has to be extremely intelligent given the complexity of the universe. So what kind of a cause would this have to be? Indeed it did. But that doesn't mean that it had a creator, which is exactly what your assertion is. And even if you were to demonstrate that it had a creator, something you've entirely failed to do, you haven't shown that your particular God did it. And no, it doesn't point to a reality beyond just the physical, assuming that we're talking about space-time. We can only speak about our particular universe. We cannot have anything to say about a much larger multiverse that may or may not exist out there. Now, of course, we cannot currently prove that such a thing exists, although... Let's be honest, the mathematics work, but neither can we deny it. The religious, however, they do directly deny it because it gets in the way of their religious narrative. They need there to be nothing beyond our universe to have any hope of getting their religious beliefs to make the slightest bit of sense. But as I've said in the past, they are just arbitrarily assigning characteristics to this land beyond the universe, characteristics they cannot demonstrate have any validity whatsoever. It all turns into a bunch of hand-waving mumbo-jumbo that really makes no sense and relies on their own wishful thinking to have any worth at all. Now, those who used to say the universe was infinite, has always existed, they argue that the, the universe itself is that primary cause. It's always been here. But ever since the Big Bang, we know that the universe hasn't always been here. And we can look at that in different ways. We can look at that through the redshift by, by noticing the Doppler effect in the universe around us. The universe had a beginning. Or we can look at it from a chemical argument using the second law of thermodynamics. We know that things move from a state of order to disorder. In order for the world to have as much order as it has today, it must have had 
a beginning in the past. If it were if it were infinitely old, we would be at a point of infinite disorder. So there's different ways to point out the fact that there was a cause to this universe. And therefore, we have to ask the question, what was that cause? Yes, we know that the universe hasn't always been here. But one thing that these guys never appreciate is that all of the assumptions that they're making about the pre-universe are actually unsupported. Every one of the physical laws, the characteristics that make up the universe, came into existence at the moment of the Big Bang. That means things like causality, which is essential to their claims, isn't a given for whatever came before or whatever sparked off our universe. They're just making empty arguments based on their pre-existing beliefs that it has to fit their conception of a god when they really have no reason to make any of these arguments in the first place. And here we see that these people really have no clue what they're talking about. The second law of thermodynamics states that things move from a state of thermodynamic order to thermodynamic disorder, which is exactly what we see in nature. The most perfect thermodynamic ordered state would be the moment of the Big Bang, with all energy contained within a minuscule space, and as things cool, as they turn from energy to matter, as the universe becomes colder, as we know that's absolutely what happened, then things become less thermodynamically ordered, resulting in entropy. They somehow think that things are going the other way. They think that things are getting more and more and more ordered, when in fact they are becoming less and less and less ordered. They are ignorant of the science that they pretend to use, and they're hoping nobody catches them on it. It's a mind of a matter type of thing, yeah. Whether or not, is it in the beginning was the word, or in the beginning were the particles? And right now, the accepted view in science is that the particles were not in the beginning, they came into existence. And that just leaves the other option, which is a mind. Ah yes, a false dichotomy. It isn't a choice between word and particles. There are many other alternatives. You don't get to just leap from discrediting one idea to demanding that another idea, one which you have never demonstrated is actually true, must be correct. But logical fallacy, that's the tool of the religious faith. We should be used to that by now. When, when you look at a personal creator like God, then you have an answer that not only answers the question of the beginning of the universe, it then answers all the other questions as well. The best, most coherent explanation that ties in all these facts and ties them in well is that God exists. But God doesn't answer anything. If you're going to argue that causality is universal, that everything that exists must have been caused, then God doesn't fare well because God must also have had a creator. They try to get around it with clever wordplay, but that has no validity at all. If you're going to claim the rules are consistent, they have to be consistent across the board or not at all. Either the rules you're insisting apply to the universe apply to God, or it's all up in the air and we just don't know. Either way, you get nothing without evidence, and we all know they don't really have any evidence. I could play the same game. I could invent super powerful space aliens that created our universe as a science experiment, and since I could, as they do, just invent a reality out of whole cloth for our alien scientists to exist in, with whatever rules and physical laws I wish, well, I could put myself in the same supposed situation they do, where I can just declare that my way is the only way that makes any sense. But of course, that would be committing the same fallacies they do. All we can say at the moment is that we just don't know for sure. We have our mathematical models that suggest multiple universes. We don't have any direct, observable, objective evidence, and so we can only continue to look. The Christians don't get any special privileges in this regard. They don't know either. They have even less to go on than science does. They just claim certainty where they have none and pose emotionally comforting dreams because that's really what their religion is all about. It's really amazing how many apologists try to use the cosmological argument, but almost all of them do it very, very badly. They just arbitrarily assign characteristics that they cannot demonstrate, designed to match the deity that they're already trying to prove. It's downright dishonest, but so too is all of theology. 
They aren't interested in reaching objective fact, regardless of where it might lead. They only want to find their way to their pre-existing beliefs, whether there's any evidence for them or not. They're trying to get from A to C without going anywhere near B, and they know that their followers already have a vested interest in making the trip, so they don't have to try very hard. But skeptics and critics, we can see the clear problem with these arguments, and we will point them out. Not that the apologists have the slightest interest of in seeing their failures. That just doesn't stop them from being failures. And that's another one down. Two to go. So here's a question for you. Has anyone seen these fine folks from Ravi Zacharias Ministries actually convince you to believe in God? Have they said anything that would even make you think in that general direction? After all, that's ostensibly why they're making these videos, to convince people that God exists. All it's done for me is to make me shake my head and roll my eyes, but hey, it's religion, what do you expect? Come on back in another week when we'll take on another of these short apologetic videos. Do you think it's going to be any better? Nah, I don't either.